Thank you for tuning in to watch this video on extracting point clouds from a photogrammetry project. In the first video of this series on point cloud processing, we mentioned that there are two types of point clouds. Photogrammetric point clouds extracted from a pair of stereo imagery. LiDAR point clouds captured by LiDAR equipment either terrestrial or airborne. Imagine Photogrammetry provides users with multiple algorithms for extracting elevation related data in either point cloud format or raster file format. In this video we will use the Enhanced Automatic Terrain Extraction with Dense Point Matching module to extract point clouds from a stereo image pair. We will cover the prerequisites for running automatic terrain extraction, the user interface for the dense point matching algorithm and understanding the settings and options to optimize our output DTM accuracy. Before running any of the terrain extraction processes, a photogrammetry project block file with accepted triangulation results must be created. The block file contains the raw imagery, camera or sensor information, ground control points and elevation data. By running triangulation, a model is created by defining the relationship between the images and the ground space. Terrain extraction cannot be run before the triangulation process is complete. In this demonstration, we will use a block file created earlier using GeoEye panchromatic imagery acquired in 2010 for the city of Cape Town. Notice that the exterior and interior orientation information has already been accepted for this project. We will run the triangulation process before proceeding to the terrain information. As we can see, the total image unit weight RMSE error value is less than 1. We will now click accept to accept the triangulation results. We are now ready to run the enhanced terrain extraction process. From the photogrammetry tab under the terrain group, click on generate and from the menu select enhanced ATE or EATE. The EATE manager dialog opens from which we will extract our DTM. The images are loaded into the viewer as a footprint. To see the images, click in the blank boxes under the visible column, adding check marks next to each image. Click on the display raster icon along the top toolbar. First, let's familiarize ourselves with this interface. Along the top menu bar are tools that allow us to modify the display, set preferences and finally run the DTM extraction. On the left side we have tools for saving and opening files. Next are the viewing tools which allow us to decide to either view image footprints, rasters or different types of boundaries. We also find the zoom and panning tools. On the far right of this tool palette we find the process engine settings. We will use most of these tools in this demonstration. On the left is the project pane. This pane allows us to identify images, AOI regions and set certain strategy parameters. Now we will set our project preferences from the project pane. We will limit the processing to a small portion of the images by using the AOI option. Click on the AOI category. Click the Start AOI tools to view the Region Delineation tools. Using this tool palette we can either define a saved AOI or digitize a new one. We will define a region of interest for this demonstration. Click on the Create Polygon AOI tool and digitize around our preferred output area for extracting the point cloud file. We then click Save to add the AOI into the project. Now we are ready to define the seed tools. The seed data provides the starting point for the extraction engine and can increase accuracy for the output DTM. We can either use an existing DTM, break lines or mass points from a block file. By default the software will use a global DEM as a seed source. In this demonstration we will add mass points from a block file. Right click and select add mass points from block file and in the file chooser we will select the current project block file and click OK. It's now added with a global DEM as a seed source. Below Seed Source, select Strategy to view the strategy parameters that have been set. We will take a closer look at this in the Strategy Parameters dialog box. From the tool palette, start by opening the Process Engine settings. The settings within this dialog box can have a significant impact on the extraction processing time. Stop at Pyramid Level defines which pyramid layers are used in the extraction process. The default is zero and tells the correlation to process all pyramids. A higher number produces a DTM faster but may produce a less accurate surface model. Whenever possible, it's best to leave this set to zero. Point sampling density can also decrease processing time, but again, it can affect the accuracy of the final output. The EATE algorithm is designed to do a pixel by pixel interrogation. Choose one to correlate every pixel, choose two to correlate every other pixel and so forth. Pixel block size defines the number of pixels considered in the processing at any one time. The formatting tab defines settings for the internal processing. If you want to produce an RGB encoded output, be sure there is a check mark next to the RGB encode settings. In the radiometry tab are settings to control the radiometric treatment of the imagery before correlation. The gradient threshold can be adjusted if the imagery has poor contrast. Increasing this value can help the software find match points across the imagery and improve the output results. The imagery in this example has good contrast, so we'll leave the default setting. Click OK and next we will look at the output settings. 
From the toolbar, launch the output setting dialog. From the general tab, we can use the file chooser to define where we want the output file to be saved if it's not already defined. The min Z and max Z values are minimum and maximum elevation values used to constrain EATE results. All values outside of this range are discarded from the output. Check the bounding box tab to define the output area using upper left X, Y and lower right X, Y coordinates. In the output files tab, we can define which file types to output. When running EATE, we have an option to output three different types simultaneously. An LAS file or point cloud, a grid file such as an IMG, DTM or DEM, and finally a TIN. All three types can be selected or, as in this case, just one. We will turn off the raster and TIN options and only output a point cloud. The split tab allows us to split the output file into multiple smaller files and provides a couple of different options to do this. We only want a single output file, so we will leave this set to none. The thin tab allows us to thin the final output data to reduce the number of terrain points in the area with the excessive density to remove redundant points. For this project, we leave the default settings. We can now click OK to accept the output setting. Next, we will look at strategy parameters. As a rule of thumb, it is advised to leave most of the default values as these are determined by engineering processes to optimize results. However, in some cases, changing the interpolation settings can improve results. Click close on the strategy manager and yes to save the changes and overwrite the existing parameters. Finally, click on the generate processing elements icon to produce the processing elements. EATE generates the processing elements defined in the output settings stage as separate .cfg files. It is recommended to review the CFG files and delete redundant ones to reduce processing time. Selecting the CFG file on the project pane highlights the bounding element in the viewer. There are times when the bounding element may be very small or be very redundant with other bounding elements. In that case, it's okay to delete the configuration file to save processing resources. By clicking submit, we can define how and when to process the project. Increase the simultaneous processes to three to use three system processes at a time. In this case, all three configuration files will process simultaneously. We can also choose to process now and define the date and time when the system resources are more readily available and run the process then. Here we will leave the start processing now and click OK. Now let's view the output. Here we see the output LAS file loaded into the viewer. In the upper left, the color can be changed. As default, the data is displayed as elevation. Our source images were the high-resolution panchromatic images, so the points are not RGB encoded. We will encode the results in another demonstration. From the 3D view group on the point cloud tab, we can select show 3D to open the point cloud in a 3D viewer. In the 3D viewer, we can tilt and zoom in to get a better view of the features. As we continue to zoom in closer to the points, they become harder to see. In that case, use the point size tool from display group to increase the size of each point. We can also use the options in the 3D view group to change our viewing mode. Selecting the perspective mode changes the points so they look larger, filling the space around the point so they appear more filled in. This is also similar to increasing the point size. That's it for this video. As demonstrated, Imagine Photogrammetry provides tools for extracting elevation data in the form of point clouds. We will demonstrate how to RGB encode these point clouds in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with future content by the Geodata Design team.